we're talking about investigating the nature of human behavior. And I think that what might help is if you go back in time and take some primitive people. When I say primitive, I mean like outlying districts, headhunters of the Amazon. If you open a watch and show them the back mechanism, they can't say how complex, how beautifully machined. They can't do that. Do you understand why? Anybody got a problem with that? Hold on. This, this video is not on. It's on camera. You got to push record. Yeah, I thought you had done that. Sorry. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Jack. You got to listen to every word because they, they can't do it. Now, if a psychologist wants to know how the brain works, say a neurologist, all you can do is have you move your fingers and pick up what area of the brain is active. Do you understand? Then thinking, solving problems, so they can map out what area becomes active. That's all they can do. But they can't tell you whether it's right, wrong, good or bad. They can map out the areas of the brain by hitting your knee and getting picking up electrical signals from different parts of the brain. You can map out the brain, but that doesn't tell you how the brain works. Do you understand that up to now? Okay. There are many people that try to study the mind. You can't study the mind. It's like taking a um, primitive technology, way back, a hundred years ago, giving them a transistor, saying, what is it? They can't say what it is. They don't know what a transistor is. They don't know what a capacitor is. They don't know what a vacuum tube is. So all they can do is cut it. Now, if you bring a chemist in, he can tell you what comprises a transistor certain amount of magnesium, silicon, you know what I mean? But he can't tell you what it is. Is that real clear? Studying the brain does not tell you anything about it. You have to study the brain's reaction in relation to the environment. The brain is a responding mechanism. When you shine a bright light in the eye, it responds. So you can say, this is how much it responds, how little it responds, but you can't tell what it is. Studying the brain gives you nothing unless you study it in relationship to the environment. A bird with wings can't fly when there's no air. And will stop flying if you can put an oxygen mask on the bird and he'll flap his wings and he won't get off the ground. He won't even try to fly after a while. Only with air there will he move. Do you understand? Now, if you beat down one wing with more pressure, you turn the wing into the wind and beat down your bank. A bird does not know how to fly instinctively. He beats his wings different ways, and if it gets him where he wants to go, when he turns it down, he moves forward. If he turns it this way, he stops in midair, if he's a hummingbird. So the bird responds Studying the bird, you have to study the environment that the bird lives in. Do you understand that? There's no way you can dissect the brain and say this is what the man is like, except in context of the environment. Is that real clear? So, if I want to study human behavior, what I'm really studying is the reactions of human beings in a given environment. I can't study human behavior. I can study their reactions. When something is hot, they move away from it. When it's cold, they might move toward it. It all depends. If a man goes down to a river and sees a fish, if he reaches for it, he usually can't get it. If he hits it with a club, it's faster than his hand reaction. He might catch fish that way, clubbing them. So what you can do is you can't, the primitive brain doesn't look any different. If you have a billion associations with boo-boo, 
a bunch of metaphysical stuff. Billions of associations. They are calming because you believe somebody that gave you those associations know what they're talking about. You don't even have to know what they're talking about. If the chief says something, it's so. If the king says something, it's so. If a politician says something, it's so. Right now they're concerned with foreclosures on banks. They're concerned with giving the banks money and the banks didn't use that money for the purpose intended. So they have words like fraud. You can't do anything that way. You have to take in the whole picture and ask what is it that you want? What kind of world do you want? So. I have drawings of different cities. Those cities have an end goal, they're not just cities. The goal of those cities is to make things relevant to people that they respond to. There's no other way. Now people that live in a city have many different reactions to the city. It's my home, my grandfather was born there, my favorite city, but they really don't understand what a city is, what it serves. Now, they use words like shelter. Home is a shelter. But when you wear a diving suit and you go underwater, that's a closed environment, shelter for underwater living. If a man goes out in the space, he brings with him the air in a suit. And in that suit he has all type of equipment he may need on that mission. If you give him a book, a novel to take out in his face, it's dead weight, doesn't serve anything. If you give him an emergency book of what to do when oxygen stops or something goes wrong, that's something. But a book about how Seminole Indians treat fish would have no use in space. Our society is loaded with how Seminole Indians treat fish has lots of superfluous information, superfluous to the needs of people. Must everything be scientific? If it is not, it's less valid. Is there a place for non-scientific? By non-scientific do you mean speculative notions? Or scientific is, I don't know, let's try to find out. Does it mean you'll find out? Not necessarily. You'll find out if you have the appropriate needs. So you can't ask what is the brain or how does it work, except in context of a situation. I think there are some animals that respond to largeness. A bear, when he stands up, he doesn't try to impress you with his size when he stands up. He stands up and if you re react, he just stands up again. But he says, I'm going to stand up so I'll look bigger, so I'll scare the guy. Bear doesn't think that way. The neurologist that wants to study human behavior is brought up to believe in free will to start with. So he's already jammed. He's already hurt. Because he can't look at anything objectively, no such thing. You can only write down when a man sees Lava, if he sticks his finger in it, it burns, he stays away from it. He can only do that. Now the chemist wants to know what lava is. He takes so much magnesium, so much melted rock, but he still puts a label on it, he calls it lava. And that means a word used assigned to something. If a person misbehaves or behaves very badly, or behavior unrelated to the situation. Uh, like I've seen a kid run over by a car and the mother says he can't be dead, he must be alive. He can't be dead, meaning the situation is unacceptable. She's responding more on a feeling tone rather than relevant. Sometimes if you like somebody and they die immediately, say he can't be dead, he was just oh, having a bowl of oatmeal. So you can't do that. You can only say that I didn't expect that, or highly improbable. I thought it was, 
anyway. You can only talk about your relationship. So, if you meet with a person and say, I'm going to exaggerate here, they have a thousand neural associations, you know, in the brain. And then you meet a person with 40,000 associations. When you talk, there's more response, less response with less associations. Do you understand that? If a person very simple, he says, God wanted it that way, that's why it's that way. Well, that doesn't tell you a damn thing, except that person's reaction. Using reason with them does not work unless you equip them with the tools of reason. Now, there are no tools of reason except specific tools of reason. How to fly a kite, how to build a wheel, that's specific reason. But general reasoning cannot be imparted to people, particularly if they like things the way they are, meaning if their reactions are very simple. Now, the reason most people behave badly or poorly is because they understand simple things. A person once said to me, when I ask you a question, I never get an answer, I get a lecture. Because there are no answers. And the guy said, why does my brother get angry all the time? Because he gets angry, that's why. Well, that doesn't tell you anything. So, if, if you've got to remember, if a person's that simple, you don't have the time to fill in all that detail, unless they say, I'd like to know step by step what made my brother get angry. And that's good, because it shows some kind of inquiry. Even if they learn the words, don't know what it means. Now you have to prove to them that most language is based upon primitive reactions. Like if lightning occurs, a primitive person might think that nature is angry, or God is angry, or the God of lightning is angry, whatever they do. If they're at that level, you don't want it. But if you take native children away from their parents, you can bring them up to the modern world. No matter how primitive a person is, if you take their babies, you can make them scientific, chemist, anything. But taking an adult is uh, jamming their whole associative system. If you bring a, a primitive person to an airport, he does not look at the airplane in terms of the wings and the struts and the landing gear and wonder at all those components. He can't do that. He can look and grin, just like you look at a tree when you're not into plant anatomy. You can't see the tree. An anatomist sees more of the tree, a plant physiologist, than you do. Or you may see clearer than he does, but he knows what to look for. Like whether it's the rings of the tree that tell him how old the tree is, or the width of the rings, whether there was a drought or flood at that time. He has learned to read, or she has learned to read nature. When I say there's no such thing as human nature, there's human reactions to the environment. Some are relevant, some are completely irrelevant. Knowing the difference, the guy says, why did you beat the hell out of your kid? He, he's way off the subject. The guy might say, because my kid didn't listen to me. That isn't the answer. It's the whole story, you know what I mean? So when normal people, normal meaning, have simpler reactions, you can't discuss human nature with them because they have a fixed notion already of what human nature is. Some inborn propensities or characteristics that are passed on generation after generation. And if behavior were fixed, we'd still be living in caves. We couldn't learn how to drive a car. We couldn't alter our patterns. Fortunately, people grow up, get old, and die, and that gives a new generation a chance for newer responses to the environment. By responses, I mean reactions. What do you get in the environment is a reaction. 
if you've been brought up as a baby with bears and lions, all tame, and you go into the woods, you'll be torn to pieces if you use that reaction system. If you're brought up with wolves and lions and elephants, all tamed, and you walk into the jungle, you won't live very long with that attitude. But no one can know except the reaction they get. Is that clear? I was told that a rattlesnake has rattles on the tail and they move to warn you. They don't move to warn you, they move, period. A rattlesnake doesn't know to warn you, he's going to bite. That's his reaction to you and it makes noise. All snakes' tail move. Do you know that? When they see people, whether it rattles there or not. The normal person projects the rattles are there to warn you. Or an animal looks hideous or has patterns that look like eyes to scare you. They have some animals that have circles on the back of their head. And they say the purpose of that is so that if something approaches from the rear, they'll think it's eyes. They don't think about those things. Knowing the difference between human projection and human reactions, that's why love would be impossible. The actions that generate love 200 years ago are not the same as they are today. Some person says, do you think there's enough love in the world? I don't know what they're talking about. I don't think they know. If they say, do you feel that people are being oriented to their environment? I know what they're talking about. But I say, do you think love will prevail? I don't think they know what they're talking about. Love, do they mean extending maximum courtesy to people regardless of the person? Well, that would be ridiculous. You can't have a word like love without defining what you mean by it. If by love you mean greeting everyone fairly and then doing a survey asking how can you relate to that person. After that survey, you say I might be able to relate to them in three months if they listen. You don't know that. So you try. You, what you do is you manipulate variables in language and the environment. If it works, you take it on. If it doesn't work, you can either get mad at the person, depending on your reaction, or you can say, uh, the person doesn't have enough to close that, to understand what I'm talking about. Um, when a child says, I love my mommy, if mommy, if the child notices that mommy feeds her, washes her, prevents her when she gets injuries, takes care of her, she associates love with mom's devotion to her needs. When a guy says to a girl, I love you, she says, what have you done to prove that? She doesn't say that. What are you, what are you, how do you manifest that? When a guy says to a girl, I love you very much, more than anything in the world, more than my life itself, the girl might be flattered. But he said nothing. Now, if a person says, how can I meet your needs? Well, if he's a Nazi, he said, go out and kill some Jews. He'd be meeting his needs. But is meeting another person's needs love? Not necessarily. Love is not only meeting their needs, but giving them tools to fulfill their needs. Do you know what that means? Like you prepare that drink because you feel it's nourishing, more nourishing than the other systems. Okay. Now if a person drinks that and has a very negative attitude, that will not nourish a person. Now let me tell you again, if you're born with a good brain, high quality tissue, all the neurons in place, everything there good, it has no mechanism remember, for knowing that which is relevant. The brain doesn't know anything until it experiences something. Like a certain bird with checkerboard pattern, when it lands on you then it pecks at your skin and hurts you. 
then you stay away from birds with check of one pattern. But you can't inherit that knowledge, like look at the bird and stay away from it without experience. You can't walk a tightrope unless you get on something and try to balance yourself over a long period of time. If you use a long bamboo pole, there's a thing called inertia. A bamboo pole doesn't flex as fast as you do, so you can do this and maintain stability with a long pole. And then you can shorten the pole, and that'll give you more and more experience in balancing. There are some people that learn to balance faster than others. That is the structure of the semicircular canal of the ear, and physical structure can give you a propensity toward learning to balance a little faster than the other guy. I don't know if you understand that. Propensity means if you have two normal eyes, one has half the quality of vision as the other, you become asymmetric. You know what I mean? If they're symmetric, you stand a better chance. If the brain is clean, meaning has no toxins in it, your response to the environment will not be based on the cleanliness of the brain, but the tribe you're brought up with. If they say Moses is angry or Loeb did this or that, that's, that's using the brain well, if it corresponds to the environment. But you can't study anything apart from the environment. Can you understand that? Any problem with that? If you say, use your head, the person, you're telling them to use tools they don't have, is what you're saying. Use your head, think about it. Well, that doesn't tell them anything, unless you give them tools. They don't know what tools are, so you have to show them what tools are. Somebody wanted a bullet once that travels around the corner, when you fire a gun and go around the corner. So he shaved one end of the bullet, so it had, it was asymmetric, instead of even, one side was shaved, so the wind turned the bullet around. If the gun, if it didn't rotate, you understand? If the bullet rotates, that doesn't do that. So, an inventive mind is not an inborn process. It's a person with a hell of a lot of tools and that ask questions that are relevant. How can I make a bullet turn? I don't know. If your boat is asymmetric, not uniform, oddly shaped, to point to one side, it'll go around in circles, if you make a boat like that. Do you understand? How big should a rudder be on an airplane? Nobody knows. They build an airplane and the rudder is too small and it doesn't work too well, so they make it larger. Sometimes they make it too large. Just finding the right size, meaning the best size for that plane, is called research. I don't know. A person that doesn't know anything would be a metaphysician, because they make assumptions. It's all right to make assumptions, as long as you know these are my assumptions, or I'm speculating. Now, the scientists that are trying to find out what is the universe. Is the universe saying, I was reading uh, that guy, what's his name? Uh, you know, uh, Kurzweil? Kurzweil? Kurzweil, yeah. He gets off in the middle of the book and he says, does the universe, is the universe intelligent? Now what the hell does that mean? Is the universe intelligent? He's trying to say that the universe may have a built-in program to evolve. He may be saying that. But if planets explode and they're all different distances and they wobble, I don't know what he means by does evolution have an end goal. Even if evolution did, say evolution makes a man more neural associations, it has nothing to do with real value because it only has to do with that organism. Do you know what that means? If your brain evolves and your eyes become more efficient, in relation to what? So how can you say the universe is evolving? 
of becoming intelligent, except in relation to something. If you don't know what that means, if the universe suddenly said the sun is too bright, we don't need that much sunlight for the amount of trees on earth, and the sun dimmed down, because it doesn't need all that burst of light, then you can say uh, the conservation of energy seems to be built in. In some areas it does exist, in other areas it does not exist. They say that the earth, when it spins, wobbles a little. Wobbles, meaning doing that. And someday it'll wobble more than others. So, is there a purpose to the wobble? No, but there's a cause to the wobble. Not a purpose. Always a cause to the wobble. You know what that means? They say that planets explode. Well, if you live one billionth of a second, no planet ever explodes. Do you know what that means? The higher you go on an airplane, waves move. The higher you go, the smaller they become and more still it appears. You can't see waves six miles up. All you can see is patterns in the ocean that look frozen. The closer you get, the more fluid. So, uh, what is the true nature of things? That's not the question. What is your response to nature? Is the question. Do you know what that means? What is your range of response to nature? You can't see a bacteria wagging its little tail. So all your books on life has to do with your receptors, not what's around you. If you wrote a book on the absolute truth, it would be a ridiculous book because absolute truth freezes things. This is the truth. Waves don't move, they're stationary. Well, from high altitude, yes. If you live one billionth of a second, lightning would be fixed like a photograph. You wouldn't see it go down. So you can see you experience change. Uh, they say that, I don't know how true it is, but certain types of insects see faster than we do. They can see a grain of sand fall. We don't. We just see an impact. Uh, probably a magnetometer can sense radio waves. We can't. So man builds instruments if he wants to know those things. But the primitive man just looks at the world and grins. He, has, he doesn't look at an airplane and say, how does that damn thing fly? He has no curiosity except he'll look at it and uh, with his primitive tools. But he can't say they've really advanced that, the people that made that. They have an advanced way of thinking. You understand? He can't say that. Now, you might see a person brought up in this culture going to church on Sunday. They're just as primitive as the headhunters of the Amazon. Do you understand that? All right. I also mentioned many times that Indians take turkey feathers or big feathers and make a hat. And if you point it out, that dancing around the fire with that hat does absolutely nothing. They do not remove the hat and say thank you for being so extensional. Do you understand that? Okay. Are they bad? No. Are they mean? No. They're riding existing paths. Their brain has a road right through it. It's as rigid as any other road. And they're riding that path. That's why when a person says, let's be reasonable, they're trying to superimpose experience with three words. Let's be reasonable. You can't be reasonable. You can learn to be reasonable. More so. Do you know what that means? Or may I have your attention? You can only have the attention they can give you. Do you know what that means? When, you, when an officer walks into an army tent, they say, attention, meaning he's about to say something, which you have to listen for. All you guys are be at point A at four o'clock. Well, that's behavioral manipulation with few words.
I'd like you to say something about what I'm about to say. Correct it. Let us sit and reason together. Say something about that. What's well, that? what do you mean by reason? Think logically. I'm not normal. What is that? What is logic? Use your head. Use your natural inclinations. It's saying, look at it my way. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Let us sit and reason together mean see if you can see things my way. That's impossible conversation. Or you shouldn't have done that if a person honestly doesn't know what to do about something and you say you shouldn't have done that, it's better to say what you can do to make it work me, rather sir. than you shouldn't have done that. Give them something to do that'll make it work. If your cat rubs its body against you and you kick the cat, that doesn't change the pattern. He may move away then. But what you're really interested in is, I'm getting right to the point now, is manipulating the environment. That's what you really want. The purpose of language is not to communicate. It's to control the behavior of other people. When you tell another person, mow the lawn, I'll give you five bucks, you say, no, ten bucks, yes, I'll mow the lawn. Oh, money is a control device to a limited extent. If you offer a girl five dollars to have sex with her, she'd feel terribly insulted. But if you give her one million dollars, she might have to think about it, even though she's a moralist. She might have to set a moral society for that deal. Otherwise, I have to work for 40 years and never get that opportunity. Is it an opportunity? It could be an insult to some people. So, use your head as no language at all. Uh, or, you're dumb, you're dumb. There's no language, no communication. Or you shouldn't have done that, there's no communication. Or I hate you, there's no communication. Unless you say you're at the, the sink run and it overflowed everything and I had to work four hours cleaning it up, try not to do that again, otherwise I won't let you near the sink. Okay? Whatever it is that you have to do. So you've got a long way to go. Most language is noise. When people sit and talk to each other, if you check with them three days later, what did you talk about, they usually don't know, because it was not significant. When normal people get together and talk, they usually say nothing. They can't say anything. So when you have zeitgeist meeting, they can only talk within the realm of what they think that means. Are you with me? Do you understand that if the brain is perfectly organized, all the tissue is good quality, it has no mechanism for knowing how to react on the varying conditions? That's learned. They say uh, you can't pass on what you learn. It seems to me uh, that's a semantic term. It seems to me. It's always good to use. It seems to me that this is so, meaning that's so. It seems to me. Now, if I look at a person that's trisexual, tries anything, I would say that they've been off in some odd direction. But I don't look down at them. I know that I could have been brought up that way. I could have been brought up by the headhunters. If you take a baby from a civilized world, two years old, bring him up with a headhunter, he'd be a headhunter. And if you say, that's a terrible thing, I don't know that it's much more terrible than the world you live in. When a guy is a plumber and another guy is an electrician, I think that's unfair use of the brain to make a person an electrician or a plumber generalist. 
you're giving them more tools, not all the tools, but more tools. That's what a person craves at a meeting. They don't know why they go there. They say, I go there because I like the Zygos movement, or I like the Venus Project. And you pin them down, what do you think the Venus Project is? And it's a, a different interpretation of a way of lifestyle. How different? Pin them down, see if you can get the information. They usually don't provide the information, because they don't know that much about it. I'll open this up to questions, if you have any. Um, I had some requests from people if you'd talk more a little bit about uh, anthropology, anthropology as a scientific discipline. In anthropology, they're okay. When they step out of the field, they usually conform. Or they can get a job as the teacher of anthropology. But the anthropologist studies different cultures mainly primitive, but he doesn't think his own culture is primitive. See, unfortunately, there's no field you can study today that isn't entrapped in a culture somewhere. Do you know what that means? It's hard to escape. And if you really succeeded in escaping from your culture, you'd have difficulty talking to people. All you'd be doing is informing them. And they say, what are your qualifications for informing me? Say, what do you get out of it? That's the qualifications. If you get nothing out of it, there's no qualifications. Qualification is how well does the system work? If you don't water your plants, they don't grow. So you water them. If the water is contaminated with chemicals and poisons, the plants die. The only way to know that is to do the what they call the wrong thing. It's never the wrong thing. In science, like on, um, on the Larry King show last, when they were talking about brain and mind and trying to distinguish one from another. Yes, what's the difference? Yeah, I don't see any. The brain is, a, is like a battery. The charge is the mind. You know what that means? A battery, if I put up a sign, battery free of charge, that would mean no electrical charge in them. It doesn't mean you can take it home for nothing. If I give you a battery free of charge, a mind free of charge, sometimes it's a brain hit by lightning. It so saturates everything that the guy has, doesn't know he's even there. The brain has been shocked into non-associative systems. That can happen. Or the brain can be partially shocked into no association systems. Then there's such a thing as neurotoxins, poisons in the brain that make it unable to operate. And then there's conditioning that makes the brain unable to operate. It's hard to tell the difference because neurotoxins can stop the brain from operating and the guy brought up in a thalamic country. You know what that means? Emotional. Only. And he only gets angry when people don't do what he asked them to do. I told you to cook the chicken. You know, they get angry. That means you didn't affect their behavior the way you wanted to. You know, you can't say to kids, I want you to listen to every word I say. He can't even hear the words you say, unless you tell him what the words mean. So you've got a much bigger job than you think. It isn't just saying, now you listen to me, I'll tell you the truth. You can't, you can't walk over to a judge and say, everything you do is based on ignorance. He says, how do you see that? How do you mean that? I say, if you ever run into a judge that talks that way, you're, you're halfway there. I've never met a person that says, how do you mean that? Yeah. So if you say to a judge, 
everything you do is erroneous, unreal. You might as well be a headhunter. You're putting people in jail, you're judging people, you know nothing about their background. As I know plenty about it, but he's a criminal. He's been in jail before. That's his yardstick, associative memory. So all our actions are based on associative memory. Do you understand what that means? Your experience, not the truth. When a person says, I'd like to know the truth about something, does the universe change? And uh, another person might say, at what rate does it change? You know, you can take a camera and a telescope and photograph the universe every two hours and the stars will move to different positions. But normally looking at it, all the stars appear to be fixed. So even that time frame camera, if set to photograph every month, the planets will move a great deal. So uh, I, you can record and say, when you're scientific you can say within 12 minutes this is what we get. Within 40 minutes, this is what we get. You say, well, which is the right one? That doesn't make sense. If you photograph an automobile with an ordinary camera, the wheels appear to be turning backwards. Have you ever noticed that on cars, on a motion picture? Well, if you can sync your camera with real events in real time, you can get the wheels to appear to turn in the right direction. So all, all knowledge is based upon time. When a chemist looks at something, he looks at it as a chemist. When a writer listens to a person, he listens for story, what he feels will be commercially saleable. When a salesman looks at a person, he's looking at something entirely different. Can I sell you a lawnmower? Now, um, it seems to me that if you were to tell the average person, if you had a city of 10,000 people and they all chipped in 10 bucks a piece and built a community bank and all the profit went to that city, he should lap onto that because that makes sense. You know what I mean? If, if it was a community owned bank and all the profit went to everybody, if the community of 10,000 people chipped in ten bucks a piece and bought a farm, food would be much less for everybody. So when they say, well, uh, that sounds like communism, that doesn't deal with anything. The person's not addressing the subject. What's wrong with the community bank? He says it'll kill incentive. Have you ever tried it? No. How do you know it'll kill incentive? You know, oh, you just got, you got, you're always wrestling with people. So, if you've got 4,000 houses, or say 300 houses, and each one buys a lawnmower, if you bought six gigantic lawnmowers and mowed the whole area, it would be better than selling a lawnmower to every house, but it's better for business. But collectivism is obviously better than any other system. So people say to me, uh, or I've been reading anti-utopian books. It says man doesn't stay fixed, he's changing. Well, it depends on the rate of change. Man, they say, can't be controlled because uh, he's not a fixed entity. When you see all these Chinese marching together in North Korea, they march like one unit. And we did uh, 2,000 plane raids over Germany. How do you get 2,000 planes off the ground without making them very uniform? You know what I mean? Now, what degree of uniformity can you attain with people? It depends on how sophisticated the equipment is. Now, when they say, is there a place for individuality? When you say, you mean, if a guy likes to fuck frogs, would there be a place for him? What do you mean by individuality? I don't know what they're talking about. I know what they think they're talking about. Will they be free? They're never free. You can't be free of your background. 
is speaking some language, always, Japanese, Chinese, but you can't be free. If a guy come up and he say, I'm an individual. <laughs> That's what that means. It means he doesn't respond as you do. Well, you can't deal with him if he doesn't. You can't make any deals. You can't get any behavioral cooperation. So, the Zeitgeist Movement should be a system that indoctrinates people to a working system that's beneficial to most people. Now, you can be so aberrated that you can't see the benefits of a system. Can you understand that? You can be, it's like the Jews going to the Nazis for free money to expand Jewish knowledge. Now, uh, you know what a, a real, in the old days, liberal, a liberal can't go to a Klan meeting and say, you guys are ridiculous. He, he can talk to them, but he can't talk to them. He'll talk at them. They won't hear a word he says. Because they listen as a Klansman with those tools. Is man a reasoning animal? He can't be, because he couldn't change then. If he's subject to change, then he can't have a fixed set of values. You know what that means? These are very tough things. You have to think about them a lot, toss them around. Meaning, listen to normal people, see if there's any signal in what they say. Except, I like being with you. That means they're not dissatisfied. But you must provide tools. And uh, to tell people that they need tools, is uh, they take as an insult. Who the hell are you to tell me what I need? You understand? The ego becomes involved because they think you're downing them. You know what that means? You're not downing them, you're trying to equip them with better tools. And there's a a glass cleaner that's available called transparent glass. Are you familiar with it? You rub it on your windshield and you can't see the glass. It deflects light in such a way that the glass looks like there's no glass there. It's called transparent fluid, which they use on optics now, on cameras. But it's temporary. It then fogs up a little. But anyway, with the advent of science and technology, say, uh, assuming we don't kill each other, we live another thousand years. The average person, uh, it's not just a laptop, but it's what it does. It's, you can turn pages of a book, you can move it with your fingers. It's doing so many new things which invite thousands of other new things, especially if people are in the business of making new things. So the exponential curve will go very sharp, leaving people behind continuously. That's why an IQ test has nothing to do with anything except your responses in relation to a fixed set of conditions. IQ does not measure intelligence. You may have uh, neurons uh, uh, neurotransmitters more than the other person has, and you might remember more, but that doesn't make you better. If you're a specialist, say a psychologist, and you're studying human behavior, how can you study human behavior without studying the monetary system? You know what I mean? The guy argues with his wife, so <coughs> you tell him to give a little, she'll give a little. Shit. Gotta get a drink. <coughs> He's high. If you know a psychologist or a neurologist, you ask him. What does their profession do? Well, it tries to adjust people so they can respond to the culture. That would be insane. Do you know what I mean? 
Do you know what I'm talking about? A psychologist would have to ask other questions. What is it I want? What is it that I want? I want a flexibility in human behavior. Uh, but a flexibility that doesn't bring any money in might make the person a hobo. You know what I mean? Normal people have ideas of well-adjusted person. A well-adjusted Indian is a well-adjusted Indian. A well-adjusted Mexican is a well-adjusted Mexican. But there's no such thing as well-adjusted people. Do you know what that means? So trying to become well-adjusted is updating your tools. Well-adjusted to change. Yeah, if you know what that means. So. The problems become more difficult if you think you can, with this system, change people. They don't even know they need change. I think when the laptop came out, you had to show people what it does. And they didn't just sit there and they'd do it. And when something new comes out, they show you what it does. And they say, oh, these are new tools. So, uh, now if a guy lives in the South Seas learning uh, celestial mechanics or high-level mathematics, there's no use for it out there if he's a native. That's information superfluous to his needs. You know what that means? If you te teach a native uh, primitive person, biological systems. It might be superfluous to his lifestyle there. You know what that means? Okay. I would imagine that if there is such a thing as uh, advanced people out in the universe, I don't believe they would communicate with us. I don't believe they would even try. I don't believe they'd have, well, let's give them a hand. I don't think they think that way. It's like you and ants, you know what I mean? Humans think that, uh, that they would welcome a new civilization. So you don't think we'd be of interest? I don't in think. Terms of How can we be of interest? <laughs> we can't say anything new. Especially if they land in the South Pacific and they meet the natives and the natives says the volcano is angry. What can they do with that? They can leave the area. Or I don't even think they know. They know the guy has primitive associations and they wouldn't have to ask him anything. All they do is watch our TV shows, which they watch for two seconds. They want a bunch of shit. I don't think they'd say that. But it's very hard to see. What, you know, people say to me, Will people be happier in the future? They're using today's standards with the future. It isn't happiness that people need. It's security and evaluation of the real world. That brings equilibrium. And to the extent that your notions about the world are unreal, you will suffer. I would say, I think you told me that your father used to beat your mother. That was the best tools he had. Getting mad at him does not give him new tools. And when he doesn't say, what do you think I ought to do? That would be rare. I don't think he'd ever say that to you. Would he? What do you think I ought to do? He doesn't even have that in his head. I gave him that opportunity one time and he rejected. He, yeah. I didn't speak to him would. for two years. Yeah, but well, that's because you believe that people can think and reason only if you give them the tools. That takes time for the tools to gel, too. You just can't hand people tools. They won't even know what it is. You know what a stage is on a microscope? You can move the film, minute quantities of distance that you're looking at the specimen can be turned to the right 
we have to turn it 50 times to move it one thousandth of an inch. So if you're looking at bacteria, that's extensional. So, uh, again, all extensional devices change. That's why you can never become sane. You can never become well adjusted. You know what I mean? If all things keep changing, how can you become sane? And sane means you're sane. That can't be, because there's so much we don't know. We can become saner, but never sane. Do you know what that means? You need to define sane. What's that? Can you define sane? Can't hear you. Define sane. Sane meaning the most operant behavior to fit a given set of circumstances. Now that's all that it means. Now if a person comes over and says, I broke a leg, say call 911 and go to the nearest hospital, I can't deal with that. That would be saner than saying, oh my God, how did that happen? I fell off a 20-foot ladder. You still have to call 911 because you can't deal with it. Well, the person says, don't you have any sympathy? What do you mean call 911? He says, yeah, I'm sorry you broke your leg. Then feel better with that. But sane means to do what you can to help them out of that situation. Saner, never sane. Wiser, never wise. Smarter, never smart. You know what that means? So, when a person says, well, what's the answer to all these problems? That's a stupid question. There are no answer. There are answers as you go along. I went to a fresco mint by a sane society. Well, nobody ever asked me. But that would be a lecture in itself. What's a sane society? That society is saner. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, those are the tools I wanted you to know about, to make sure. So when you look at a neurologist, he's just measuring the reaction the brain has. When you stick a needle here, there, he knows what zone of the brain. He can draw a map of feelings, uh, depression. He can map out the brain. Then he can look for toxins in the brain. But he can't understand the mind can't understand that it's a responding organism. When you use mind, you think like the associative system. Yes. Yeah. That's all you have is the associative system. Yeah. You, you never become sane. Can you understand that? If there's a society out there that says, boy, they've attained the ultimate, there could be no such thing. Ultimate means they're all dead. Uh, when but, you die, it's ultimate. But we all adjust constantly. Right? We don't adjust. We are made that way by circumstances. We either do or we blow our top. There are people that insist that the world they have in their head is a real world. They wind up in institutions. But what they have in their head is only their little unique differences. So, if you ask a person, they say, I, I'm not well mentally. Say, what is it that you want? Well, I want a fair relationship with people. Well, if you went to live in a Seminole Indian village, if you don't talk their language, you'll never get along with them. So, do you want to become a Seminole Indian? Or do you want to be you in a Seminole village? You can't be you in a Seminole village. You have to change the village. You have to go into the village and say, everything you guys do is wrong, and show them the way. That's almost impossible. So it's easier to kill you. That's what the Arab-Israeli thing is. It can go nowhere. It'll never work out, because they don't even know what the problem is. The problem is everybody wants a piece of the pie. Now what does that mean? They want the same opportunities that other people have without discrimination. Can't have that. Because there are people already in power, only if they lose that power. As I understand it, 
things were so bad in Russia that the people revolted. And they shot the royal family, the kids and all, because they didn't want any carryovers. So when Joe Stalin sent people to Siberia to work, they were disruptive to his culture or his concept of culture. Now Joe Stalin never said, what kind of concepts should I have had? He would never talk that way. He wouldn't be Joe Stalin if he did. If you walked over to Hitler and said, suppose you killed all the Jews, then what? He doesn't think about those things. You know what I mean? It isn't the Jews, it's the business world that he doesn't like. I don't like Jewish conditioning, but I don't like Catholic conditioning. I don't like Presbyterian conditioning. I don't like American conditioning. So it's the conditioning that's the problem. But uh, you only do what you can do. Can you achieve balance? I take people that believed in nature and let them build a natural farm. And people that believed in science build, live in this city. Uh, all the cities would be saner in design, but there'd be different value systems. And you can check them out, see how it works. If you want to live on organic food, and you have a community of 40,000 people living on organic food. They're all healthier, but mentally they're not. Physically, they're in perfect shape. But mentally, they believe they've made metaphysical temples and all that, you know what I mean? So, um, you might check out different cultures and say, yes, they're all healthy physically, mentally they're aberrated. Do you think you know what I mean? You know, Hitler was a vegetarian, don't you? He, he didn't believe, didn't believe that, in eating living things. But uh, his brain was no better than it was. So if a person eats nothing but organic food, never had cancer, never had heart disease, but is fucked up right here, has associative disease, you know what that means? Doesn't like Swedes or Catholics or gays. That's associative disease. So we don't measure all of that stuff. Our language is an attempt at controlling the behavior of people. It isn't a mechanism for controlling behavior. It's an attempt. People write books because they think they can impart their values to other people. The book is only one piece of the action. There are many other things necessary conversing with one another, up and back, disagreements, areas where you're a little foggy, not quite clear. So when I tell you that a neurologist doesn't know what the problem is, unless they're social, he, he has no idea. If he works on the brain as a study, how does the brain work? The brain doesn't work, it responds to different cultures. Do you understand that? Ask a question, how does the brain work, cannot be asked outside of the culture. You can't do that. It's like saying, how do we walk? Well, if you lived on a planet with one-tenth of gravity, the guy says, let's go for a 20-mile walk, you say, okay, because gravity doesn't bother you too much. But if you live on a planet with five times the gravity of the Earth, I said, I want to walk a hundred feet. I said, that's too much for me. Do you understand why you respond to the environment? And senators make laws, but they can't change natural law. They can't change the law of gravity in a Congress meeting. So it's easier to go up the steps of the Capitol. They can't change natural law, although to a limited extent, we can affect it. So all of us live within the trap called time and culture. You know what that means? We live within the trap called time and culture. So an anthropologist can't study culture unless he studies his own culture. And if he does, he's not going to become an anthropologist, become a student of uh, life systems, maybe, if 
you know what I mean. All single professions will disappear in the future. I have no question about it. You have to become so general. Maybe all-encompassing is a better word than general, because that sounds like it's less. I can't use that word, all-encompassing. Well, more encompassing. Hmm? More encompassing. Emotions get in the way because they block you from looking at things in a more general viewpoint. But when you like the way you think, that's called arrested development. You said one time there's no emotional problems. What do you mean? What did you mean by that? Well, by that I meant uh, uh, there are relating problems, relating to different things. And you get hopped up about it, or you get angry, or you feel depressed. The only way you should feel depressed, there are real reasons feeling depressed. If uh, Hitler won the war and they put you both in solitary confinement, you would feel depressed. Because there's nothing you can do about it. If you were around 500 normal people, they can make you feel depressed. They can cut you out. But it depends how much you know about normal people, so that you don't let them do that to you. You know how far you can go, or you think you know how far you can go. You'll find out fast enough how far you can go. Just when people call up and they say, what is the Venus Project? You say, have you got two weeks? You know, you can't say, this is what it is. Oh, thank you very much. It's like answering questions. You can't answer questions. But you still have to have a couple of sentences yes. for those occasions yes, you, do. you can't get around it. Yes, if you're really interested in knowing how people work and how they relate to one another and the environment, <clears throat> get the book. Because you don't have, you got too many calls every day to go into detail. After you get the book, if you have problems, we can discuss it. Yes, a person, uh, what do you want? I want a car. No. They want to be a certain place at a given time. That could be done by television, you know what I mean? You can visit your Aunt Minnie on a screen full size. You don't want to drive to Aunt Minnie's. And you don't want to drive to work. You want a paycheck. Not every week when you want it. Right? Guy says, I want a job. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He wants some money to buy the things he needs. So then he needs things, not money. You ask the person, what do you want? A decent home. A $40,000 home? A $20,000? What do you mean by a decent home? But in this culture, people can't really oh. use that kind of logic. Oh. They, they have to think yeah. within these... They're incapable. You're going to give them a whole new set of tools, uh, and uh, there'll be people that won't be gunning for you, too because you're taking their tools away, or their controls. So when you say, uh, what does the Venus Project really think? That's an abstract question. Depends on the situation. Lock your frame of reference. What? Lock your frame of reference. Yeah. The person says, what if you build a Venus Project? and the media hits it and destroys it, then we're fucked. Or we start over again if we're still around. You know, it's just a lot of unnecessary aberrant responses. That's why I would things. never talk to a psychiatrist, because they think they are on the right track. Although there are some that know they know very little about human behavior. You know, there are people like that, that have studied the field of medicine and really feel that they don't have much control over health. And the nurse says, I want a healthy body. And I say, what do you want it for? If you're just healthy, so what? 
I'd rather have a healthy mind and a warped body. You know what I mean? But uh, when we talk about associative systems, that correlate, you know what that means? With changing conditions. You know, they ask you in school, what do you want to do with your life? What a stupid question. What can I do with my life? School doesn't offer you everything. You go. You usually say a healthy associative system with, correlates with the real world, but that was good. It correlates with changing conditions. Yes. More appropriate, huh? Yes. Which is the real world, I guess. Yeah. Huh. But then you got to remember, you're drifting away from the average person. Yeah. And you got to update your communication, or try. If you don't work on the people around you, you will get lost. And they uh, might say, what are you, a perfectionist? You know, they have no other words. A perfectionist is a guy that died. That's it. You can't be a perfectionist. You can be particular about things. Just get away from the holistic word, like truth, the absolute truth. In order, re I said this before, in order to tell the truth, you'd have to know everything to know that which is true. Okay, you guys, I'm going to relax. Yeah.